Wolf Tice Soundshot. Insights and analysis from one of the leading law firms in Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe. Welcome to a new episode of the Wolf Tice Soundshot Legal Tech Edition. In this episode, four of our legal tech experts get together to discuss trends and developments that promoted them to embrace technology as an integral part of their everyday work life and how it shapes their approach to service delivery. They also use this opportunity to celebrate the second anniversary of our project management and collaboration platform, Wolftice Space, even sharing a few anecdotes along the way. Niki Dinhoff and Claudia Dabrowska both are lawyers in our banking and finance practice. Niki specializes in banking law, stock exchange compliance law, as well as debt capital market and financing transactions, operating from our Vienna office. While Claudia, located in the Warsaw office, focuses on financial institutions, payment services law, and real estate financing. They are joined by Saiba Thingna, a trained arbitration lawyer turned legal tech associate in document automation and client solutions expert, and Matt Sharps, who has experience in information governance, project management, and contract lifecycle management. Both Zyba and Matt are part of our legal tech and innovation team, helping both lawyers and clients implement smart solutions for legal projects. Welcome, everyone. Just to start our discussion, I would like to say that I observe nowadays that law firms are forced to implement innovation technology in their business strategy. I think that it is because the competition on the legal market is that huge that being innovative has started to be a market requirement, no matter where such law firm has its business located and how big it is. When I recently scrolled through marketing posts of law firms on social platforms, such as LinkedIn, I had a thought that we are in the times of the digital transformation of law firms. But we have to admit that the use of technology is fairly new in the legal sector, isn't it? That's why I would like to ask you, Zaiba and Matt, as our Wolftice Legal Tech and Innovation team members, do you think it is more a trend in press releases or real revolution in legal world? Yeah, thanks, Claudia. I think that's a great point, actually. Certainly, a lot of days when I'm scrolling through Twitter or LinkedIn, I feel like I could easily be playing buzzword bingo. There's, there's a lot of headline topics that are getting a lot of press releases. And I think it gets really interesting when you start to, to dig a little bit behind that and talk to other law firms, talk to um, colleagues in other legal tech teams, and you definitely then get to start to get a sense of what is real and what is maybe a bit of promotion as opposed to action. When you look at the market, there is a huge variety of tools and solutions that are out there. They're covering the whole legal spectrum, really everything that we would consider in a commercial law firm, but also very much um, a big market for consumer tools as well, of course. Uh, you can easily um, claim your, your money back on your flights at the moment during, uh, during COVID with some of these apps. And when you look at investment in the sector as well, in the last couple of years, that's absolutely boomed. So last year, 2019, we're talking something like a, a billion dollars invested in legal tech. But it's definitely not the same across the board. You look at different regions and you definitely get very different experiences of where technology is in the legal sector. The UK, of course, they had their deregulation quite a, quite a few years ago now. And the larger law firms in the UK, they're doing huge amounts of technology. It would be hard for a young lawyer going into a law firm in London not to use technology, for example. But in our region, in Central and Southeastern Europe, of course, there is a bit of a lag, but we are very quickly catching up. And it does actually create for us um, working in the sector quite an interesting experience. So we get to be sort of fast movers on a regional basis, but also have the benefits of being followers on the global stage. So maybe some of the things that firms in London tripped up along the way, we managed to avoid those mistakes somehow. But of course, there's also very much specific tools that, they're, that we're talking about. Uh, we use things within Wolf Tice, and there's, there's certain things that lawyers will definitely hear a lot about. Zyber, uh, maybe you want to talk about what we're doing here and um, what you see or think about some of these big headline items? Thanks, Matt, for that question. Yeah, I think you mentioned a really good point that in our part of the world, we kind of lead the change, and that's 
what I, I think in Austria especially and the CE and SEE, we were one of the first firms to invest heavily in legal technology and use it in our day-to-day -day, uh, work. Like many law firms in the UK, so the more advanced markets, one of the first things that we started at Wolf Thais was document automation. That was our first legal tech project. We were a team of three. We scouted the whole uh, legal tech market. We, we spoke to law firms, we spoke to lots of startups and everyone working in, in the legal tech sector got a lot of feedback and finally narrowed down on a document automation software. We picked a no-code platform, so we had more the approach that we want our lawyers to be the ones automating documents and not to have a big team of coders or programmers sitting behind and doing the work. And we found the solution that we, a very young solution that we helped develop. And we started our first document automation in Wolf Thais under the name of R2D2. And this opened up really a lot of revenue channels for us as well, because for firms like ours, where we, we are one of the biggest firms in our region, we get usually highly specialized work and that's what clients come to us for. But because of document automation, we were able to get, you know, offer clients commoditized work at very attractive prices very quickly. Yeah, this is one of the most obvious use case for a law firm. After we felt a little more comfortable with this project, we decided to venture out and like everyone get into the platform space. Client service delivery is something that everyone always talks about. And for us, a firm like ours, where we value the client experience, um, it was important to see what we could do with this. And yes, to focus on making our client experience more seamless, we um, developed Wolf Thais Space, which is a platform where we can manage all our projects online. We have a data room functionality within, we have a task functionality. It really helps us allocate resources, make sure that we work within timelines, we work within budgets. And it's something that clients have access to on the go. They can also check their project status with very attractive visualizations on their phones on the go. Yeah, so once we got comfortable with Wolf Thais Space and R2D2, we thought, okay, um, let's offer a little bit more to our clients. We started developing tools that could be managed by clients with assistance from Wolf Thais. So uh, one of the tools that we've developed in um, the last year is called Leaseit, which is a tool where asset managers can manage their lease agreements, uh, manage all their contracts and uh, through the whole contract life cycle. So the um, contracts can be drafted or automated. The first drafts can be done on um, lease it. They're saved there. All the important data points are captured on this tool, which creates visualizations uh, where an asset manager can go on and see, uh, for instance, which properties of his are profitable, where he can make adjustments, um, which which properties might require further selling for instance these kind of tools also help the day-to-day -day management for any in-house legal team for instance these tools will capture all um, the expiry dates of contracts and notify the in-house legal team that certain contracts need to be extended or whether where there are rent adjustments required so this is one of the tools that we have created specifically for the real estate sector. And these tools actually were very well received by the big players in the market. We have presented them to asset managers in London. We've presented them at conferences in Europe. And um, yeah, so after speaking with all these um, asset managers, what was interesting is that while many of them see the need to have such technology and they are in agreement on how this would make their work easy, not many of them are using it. Which brings us to what we are planning to do in the future. To offer our clients the end-to-end -end experience, one of the things that we're looking into now is to build up on these tools uh, with AI and machine learning where we can automatically capture data points and record data and use the data to help uh, clients achieve their KPIs. Claudia, this is one example of how these legal tech tools have helped asset managers in the real estate sector, but you work in the banking and finance sector. How has this helped your clients and your work? 
Uh, yes, you're right, Zaiba, and uh, thank you for this question. Um, to answer it, I would like to refer to my personal experience. Uh, in the last two years, uh, we, I mean, banking and finance team in Warsaw, we had a chance to use innovative technology in several real estate and finance projects. From those uh, projects, I think I realized that the innovative technology could be used by the lawyers at all stages of the transaction and that it will certainly facilitate uh, the everyday work. For example, we experienced such transactions in which first drafts of documents were drafted with uh, a use of um, the automation tool and the whole process were managed only through space platform, uh, which I already mentioned. Uh, and uh, what means that there was almost no email communication. Uh, I would like to speak here a little bit more about uh, Space Platform because that was the main tool we used during the, those transactions. Um, and the Space Platform uh, enables to share and review all transaction documents in real time. Uh, thanks to this platform, projects are more transparent and the communication is faster. Uh, as I mentioned before, it allows to exclude email communication. In the same time, this platform can be also created as a tool to track a transaction progress by all the parties. In such cases, when the transaction progress is tracked by all the parties, we usually divide users into groups with different permission rights. Uh, what allows us to have a control of what is shared with our client and what with the counterparty. Additionally, this platform gives uh, access to all transaction documents, which can be grouped into folders in the way the leading lawyer decides at the moment of the creation of the platform. So I would say it also plays a role of sort of data room. For example, for uh, financing transactions, it is just a perfect tool to manage the CP collection process. It is easy to upload documents to the platform and to track progress of the collection as the system has this utility to show the current status whenever a user wants to. And this is really cool because the end user can even see the current status in a way of a graphic form. In my opinion, all these innovative solutions give an opportunity to lawyers uh, in general uh, to provide a higher level of services and they just simplify our work. I can also add that the clients appreciate the, those technological tools. They even sometimes send us emails confirming that it was a pleasure to use our system, which is of course really nice to hear. But there is a question behind my story, I think, which I would like to ask Nikki about. So the question is, uh, do the clients actively demand the use of the innovative technology? What do you think, Nikki? Do you have such experience? Yes, I, I think they are more and more demanding it. They also sometimes uh, include that as part of their request for a fee proposal in our um, projects where they approach us and ask for certain IT or technologies that they want to see uh, that uh, to be used by, by a, a law firm that they pick for their projects. We already pitched quite successfully for certain clients to use the platform uh, of their space. We also used the automatization tool to successfully finish projects, but also to use it internally for our team to be quicker with projects. And I see also from, from last week's Legal Tech Conference, which took place online, that more and more firms, not only in the banking sector, but also in other different sectors, more and more using also due to the, the current situation, uh, using more and more technology and maybe a little bit also forced uh, by their management to use uh, more technology as they are incentivized and, and receive higher bonuses, for example, if they uh, introduce new software data managing systems or, or document managing systems uh, into uh, their daily work. So as regards the uh, Wolfdai space, we, I think after two or three years uh, as an associate, I gained more experience in our projects and how they, how the process is and what work needs to be done by an associate where the whole team is involved and 
where we need information from clients, where we send documents to clients, what documents these are. And from this experience, I tried to find ways uh, to work more quickly uh, and deliver uh, excellent work to the client. And this was also discussed in our team with the partners involved in the project. And then we also asked clients, we approached clients and in particular banks, uh, how they see that and if they see something the market coming up or how they want to proceed in future work. And then we got really good feedback from their side that they do not see currently other firms, at least in Austria, working with platforms like Wolfdai Space, but they tried to, yeah, to get some more information. And once we received their further feedback, we saw, okay, there is as there's something where we should work on and find a solution. So we internally also discussed this. And together we did some training sessions and, and review session of, of uh, the different tools. And in the end, Wolf Space was the perfect platform which offered all the solutions that we needed for our clients. We could offer this uh, to share documents, to have the full communication via the platform. Uh, and also to manage documents and, and different other things like show processes to clients, show um, timelines to clients, which is in our work very important as we have quite tight timelines and always send around Excel sheets and emails with timelines. And sometimes um, people miss emails, don't find uh, the information anymore. And we evolved that space that everything in one place. And this was, in our view, the best solution and it's highly appreciated by our clients. What I also hear from clients and what I'm also very curious of is uh, if we have uh, any further tools or apps, for example, that you, Matt and Cyber, are developing at the moment or you see something which will come up in the next year, uh, maybe also in, in connection with Volta Space that can be used either by us uh, within the firm, but also uh, which can be used by our clients. Thanks, Nikki, for that question. At the moment, we are offering a suite of different tools, one of them being the CP tool, which I'm sure you've worked with a lot. It is basically a tool where banks and borrowers can track the conditions precedent for the credit facility. So we have an interactive dashboard where you can track which CPs are fulfilled, what documentation is still pending, and which also helps you track timelines in a more informed way. We also have a trademark tool, which we've created on Wolf Tire Space, where companies can upload all their trademarks and track them. So they can see uh, which jurisdictions they are live in, where they are about to expire, what the next steps are, everything can be managed on this online portal. We also have another tool called Build It, which is similar to the Lisa tool that I mentioned, except that this tool is for real estate developers. Here, this is a tool that brings agents, real estate developers and buyers together where they can interact with each other. They can track how the real estate project is progressing. They're able to track big milestones and they're able to share concerns and floor plans all on this online space. In addition, a subsidiary of Wolf Thais also offers a whistleblowing tool. This is a tool that we have developed with our data protection lawyers and software developers create a very secure portal where whistleblowers can register their complaints. In the future, we're also looking at expert systems, but this is something Matt loves to talk about. Matt, maybe you want to take over? Yeah, exactly. This is definitely something that I see as um, a bright future for, for legal tech within the firm. Obviously, working across so many different legal fields, there are constant regulatory changes across the, the 13 different markets that we operate in. And our lawyers are producing great content around that. So client alerts, informing our clients around changes to regulations, how it might impact their businesses. And using technology, one option going forward would be to start building tools that we can link to all this great information we're already sending out that really gives the client an opportunity to then 
go through what is often a, a fairly simple questionnaire, uh, something that you maybe host on the corporate website, and they can see and get an idea of how exactly some regulatory change might directly impact their business and give them ideas about what the potential next steps in addressing that change might be. There's a lot of movement globally in this space. So some of the larger firms in London already have whole suites of tools. And I think it's something that we in the team definitely see uh, a future for and a great deal of potential for the firm. It's one of these areas where you can really create new business models and, and new revenue streams for a law firm. Um, one of the other things that I think is maybe quite interesting to, to talk about. So Zyva and I, we obviously t attend quite a few legal tech conferences. And a lot of the people we meet at these conferences, they're, they're definitely younger lawyers. And I'm just wondering, Claudia and Nikki, how do you see the role of young lawyers when it comes to technology? Do you think that there, it creates additional opportunities in terms of um, maybe leadership or project management areas like that? Mm, I agree with your notice because I also noticed that um, it is more common for the young uh, lawyers to willingly participate in innovation projects. Um, they, or I would say we, are more ready to handle such tasks and to improve uh, ourselves by taking trainings on uh, legal technology. Uh, but of course, uh, we cannot exclude senior lawyers. I think it is more personal approach um, that matter here and uh, not a matter of seniority, in fact. I just think that maybe young lawyers uh, know that they live in a constantly changing reality and they had to be flexible. Maybe they, I don't know, even feel that knowledge about technology is an additional skill. Uh, which will make them stand out of the crowd or which will be a must uh, to possess uh, in the future. So uh, they are just um, ready to be involved in those projects. Yeah, yeah that's totally correct. That's um, a perfect way to slowly give a junior the uh, possibility to work in different projects and to, to let them learn how a project, how the process is, what work needs to be done when, uh, you have all the information in one place and it makes it easier also them to take over tasks and to lead also some parts of a project at the beginning and then uh, move forward and uh, take over full the full project or further parts, which is uh, really, really uh, interesting to see also with my young colleagues in the team, how we proceeded with both the space, especially also with the automation tool. And we create new ideas and this is a really, really cool process. And I'm happy that we all are involved. Yeah, you're right, Nikki. And also what already Matt uh, said, that there is uh, something which I observed that um, the engagement in innovative technology allows young lawyers to be more involved in the management process of the projects. Um, and I see it in the way that, of course, we can state that um, the young lawyers are more involved because uh, mainly those are the easy tasks which are, are usual, usually organized by use of technology. I mean, such tasks like, uh, I don't know, uh, online folders, for example. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, thanks to the use of this technology, uh, I believe that younger lawyers have a great opportunity to structure the project by their own. I believe that it enables them to be part of leadership and to better understand the whole process of a transaction. Yes, that's, that's true. And I, I think also for young lawyers, it's important that they have further opportunities uh, apart from the transaction, being a transaction lawyer or litigation lawyer. But it's, it's always, it depends on certain curiosity of the people if they want to work with such tools. Also I saw from Sebastian, my colleague, that for example, programming skills are very important. It makes it easier to understand, uh, for example, automatization tools, how they work in the background and how you can implement certain parts in the document. And of course, what is also very important uh, in my view is that you have a different, you need to have a different view on the documents that you're working on, how to read them and how to 
filter uh, certain parts that can be automated and uh, to see which parts need to be with fixed text and stay as they are. This is also a quite interesting tool to see when you work with young colleagues, which approaches they have to this um, uh, and which solutions they offer for, for the, the automatization tools. Yeah, that sounds great. But also, I, I think that we shouldn't forget to mention that there is a new trend on the market, that some law firms uh, have started to create uh, special positions for the lawyers who uh, will be responsible only for the um, technological part of development of the firm, uh, like you said, document automation, uh, and they gonna be somehow excluded from the transaction part of work. Uh, so I would say that could be also an opportunity for young lawyers, you know, to take a different career path than a standard uh, work of a lawyer, in fact. Yeah, so we, we have now a lot of what we do here uh, in the firm with regard to legal tools. What are your biggest uh, successes and are there or have there been any failures, any tools that you tried and worked on and then said, okay, after some months, I, we don't need that. And it was, was not the time worth uh, to focus on that. Um, I don't think so far there have really been any tools that we've tried and then decided that it's not the right direction. We've been quite fortunate and we've done enough investigation into what problems we're really trying to solve with technology that when we've chosen a project to focus on, we've always got to the point of fulfilling that, um, that goal. That's not to say, of course, that there haven't been uh, failures along the way with the tools that we have brought into um, production at the firm. I think when Zyber and I reflect on how we've rolled out space over the last two years, we, we can definitely look at that first couple of months and say, if we went back, we would definitely do the onboarding or the initial onboarding process differently. What we did right at the start was we invited literally the whole firm to sessions and we clicked through every possible thing that you could click through on the platform enabled all the various functionality and modules and very quickly of course we noticed that we were losing people uh, in the training sessions they weren't able to really relate this to their daily work i remember in fact in one of the sessions uh, i hadn't been with the firm that long so i wasn't particularly well known amongst some of the lawyers um, and someone turned around to me at one point and just asked, are you a salesman for the platform? So <laughs> that kind of was a bit of an eye opener for us that we, we needed to revise our, our onboarding process in a way. But I think Zyb, you'd probably agree, actually that experience also led to one of the biggest successes for the team. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think we realized that we can't go to lawyers and show them everything that the tool has to offer. We really tailored our approach um, with every person we spoke to. So when we went to a disputes lawyer, for instance, we went with a mock um, litigation case or an arbitration case and showed them exactly how they would be able to use the functionality of this platform in their transaction and in their daily work. We did the same through all our practice groups, we um, set up fake M&A transactions for the corporate team. We set up uh, mock procurements for our procurement team. And I think the fact that they saw work that they do in their daily lives, they were able to visualize it on this platform led to many people buying in quite quickly. I think we were able to achieve a very high adoption rate in a very short time. At present, for instance, we have more than 300 active project sites um, and about a thousand users on WorldTire Space. And I think, yes, from our big failure came our big success. Yeah, I think that what we're going to see as we develop further within the team with the products we're using is definitely the development of an ecosystem. You see it across the whole legal tech market at the moment. A standalone tool is not going to be a viable option going forward. So whenever we onboard new technologies, we'll of course see space as the foundation and 
everything that we can bolt on top of that through APIs to create more end-to-end -end solutions to, to really help us deliver even more value to our clients in, in the next five years. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Volftai Soundshot, which will be the last episode for this year, as we will be taking a short holiday break. We will be back in January with more updates on developments in law and business in Central, Eastern and Southeastern Europe. For more information, you can contact us via email at soundshot at or visit our website at www.wolfthais.com. You can also follow us here to receive further updates on developments in law and business from one of the leading law firms in Central, Eastern and Southeastern Europe.